Yes. Let's see where we are, where we just were, and where we're I feel like Back to the Future. Here's where you are, here's where you were, here's where you're going. All right, Back to the Future. Yes, a couple of you, a couple of you, like five of you. Okay, good, good. Marty! So, we're in the middle. We're in the middle of hypothesis testing. And we're gonna be here the rest of the time. Yes. But today, we'll give you a glimpse as to where we're headed. We've got two more to pick up, two more tests to pick up. And I think you can probably figure out what they are based on how I'm gonna introduce where we were, where we just were, and where we're about to head, okay? So where we started this whole, this whole journey was we were testing single parameters. And there were two tests that we did because there were two parameters we care about. What are those two parameters that we care about? Over and over again, we've seen them over and over again. Proportion. A proportion and an average. We care about a little proportion, little p, or population proportion, little p, and we care about the population average, little mu. Yes. And those guys had clever little names. This guy was called one prop z test. One prop z test. And of course, as Susie and I'm going to give Jared props, even though he's not here, pointed out back in the day, if you run a two-tailed test, you can also one, run one prop Z int to get the same results. With a one-tailed test, sometimes there's disagreement. We actually saw one of those in class where there's a little bit of a disagreement. But for a two-tailed test, one prop Z int works just fine too. Fantastic. Who was the test when you're testing a single average? Just the t-test. That's all it is. One of the most important statistical tests. One of the most well-used statistical tests. Those two, actually. Using the normal distribution to test for averages, using the t distribution to test for means. Very, very, very important. I'm going to put a slight sidebar on here. Uh, MP. Remember what MP stands for? Matched pair. Matched pair. Remember those bad boys? Those are the ones that look like two data sets, but they aren't. They look like two data sets because you actually see two lists of numbers. But it's not two data sets, because what are you looking at? The difference. the difference between those two data sets. So you have to form the difference of them. Then you've got one string of differences that you're testing. And we decided, I think pretty well, a few, a few weeks ago, like a couple Tuesdays ago now, there's a difference between, and there's a difference, a, a contextual difference, between testing the difference of two averages and the average of a difference. Does that make sense? I know it sounds, I mentioned it sounds Dr. Susie, but there is, there, is, there is a contextual difference between that. If you test an average versus an average individually like that, you sacrifice your confidence, which we've talked about since the, since the dawn of this class, which seems like the dawn of time, I know. <laughs> but there, that's why we like doing the difference of the two data sets and then testing that average difference. Good, so I loop that in as a, as a single parameter, because it is. It's one mean. I tend to call it mu sub d when we refer to it, only because it is a little bit different in what you have to do to process the data. But that's it. That's it. So I call it mu sub d, just as a, just as a kind of a, a mnemonic for you guys to remember. <coughs> Beautiful! And that was like, I don't know, four weeks ago we started into that. We took our time. I like taking our time through that. That was good. That was good. Just to establish, because right before that we had talked about p-values. And I think at this point we now understand small p-values mean something's up. I had a false positive last night, this is great. So Max just graduated from uh, preschool, preschool. And it's just amazing. And, and I couldn't go to his graduation because it, like, it was like a 10 o'clock on a Thursday or something, you know, of course, it's always like I'm in the middle of class. And uh, so I was watching the video last night. Jen took a video of it, it's adorable. I mean, you know, his kid's, kid's five and a half years old. I remember it was like a week ago, he's like laying on my chest sleeping, puking on me. But uh, so I'm watching this video of him uh, and, and he's watching it with me and he's talking about, he's talking about, uh, uh, what's it? Oh, we've got a cape right here, Daddy, and then we sang the song and danced, and, and Child was coming up next. This was uh, Child's Garden. It's going to Shiloh next week, I think. Um, and he's got a little pet lizard that he caught this week on his shoulder. Uh, tadpole, his name is. We've never named an animal anything other than other animals. So he got a defense lizard tadpole on his shoulder. And as it gets to a certain point in the video, he jumps off the thing he's sitting on, which is the coffee table, and hits the ground, and the video restarts. And I'm like, oh wow, that's wild, babe. He uh, he made the he made the the, the hard drive skip because it's an old school laptop with a hard drive. And Jen's like, no, I don't think so. I'm like, well, yeah, but he jumped off, and at the exact same time, the things flipped around. As it turns out, it wasn't. It was just at the end of the video. But I said, oh, it, it broke the hard it, it made the hard drive skip. Check it, check it. Make sure you don't lose this file. I don't want to lose this video. We didn't back it up yet. Typical dad crap, you know. <laughs> but it was wrong. I was a false positive. 
I said he made the video skip, but it was just happened to be at the end of the video and it flipped over. So, now think about that. The video's freaking 25 minutes long. He happened to jump at the very moment the video was ending, which correlates, if you, if you think, to our 5% chance of a type 1 error. It just so happens that sometimes you land there, randomly, like Max with the damn lizard running off his arm, making a jump off the coffee table. He just happened to end up in that tail on the, uh, the bell curve, or whatever curve it is. I don't know what curve it actually is. But type 1 errors happen all the time. How many of you have said something Said, oh, man, you, have any of you accused your friends of something? And it turns out they didn't do it. That's, wow. that's a type one error. <laughs> that's a type one error. It happens. It happens. How many of you have not accused your friends of something and they did it anyway? That's a type two error. That happens too. So these things do happen outside of the context of our, of our, of our little statistical world, although we can quantify and measure them here. Although I can measure maxes. Maxes was basically zero, although I was wrong. So that made Philly even dumber. So anyway, that's it. Off the fence lizards back to statistics. So we liked it here. It was a good place to be, but we decided it wasn't good enough. We had to test two parameters next. Why did we have to test two parameters? Why can't we just test a bunch of these? For example, ADD kids, non-ADD kids, testing brain sizes. Why the hell do you have to do exactly, Darla? These are two independent. I love that word. But even though they're independent, all the more reason. If you have two different brain volumes, just run two t-tests. Have a confidence interval for the ADD kids and have a confidence interval for the non-ADD kids and just compare them. What's the problem with that? What's always the problem with that? You lose your 95% confidence as soon as you start stringing those together. That's the problem. And there's no way to pair them off. There are independent, so there's no reason to do this match pair move. Because the ADD kids and the non-ADD kids have no interaction between them. One is not affecting the other at all. Affecting. One is not affecting the other with an effect at all. So we can't do it as two independent T's, or two sessions, two separate T's, because you'll sacrifice confidence. And you have, to you have to raise your confidence level on each test. But you'll see why that creates a host of issues too as we, as we wrap the class up. So we still had two parameters. We had P1 and P2. And we had mu1 and mu2. mu1 and mu2. Beautiful. Notice the correlation? Yes. Yes. Very nice correlation. This guy here, cleverly, two prop z test. And all of these things, of course, have intervals that associate with them. So there's a two prop z int you could use if you wanted to, or if you if you could. There's a there's a t interval. We've used that back in the day. And this guy over here, this is the one that's a little bit of a strange title. It's called the two stamp T test. Two stamp T test for two samples. Ugh. Good. We got two last tests to talk about. What do you think they're going to be? Say, exactly. More than two. More than two. So I'm going to break these into two separate, instead of I looping them together, like these I can loop together fairly comfortably because these are similar enough to these, but the next two are actually extraordinarily different, at least the, the ones I want to talk about in class, which are the most popular ones that are used in industry. So we're going to start today with three or more. And that's what's cool about this. You don't have to have like a set of tests for three, a set of tests for four, a set of tests for five, for five. Three or more proportions. So we'll go P1, P2, P3, dot, 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 up to P sub N. Up to P sub N. We'll deal with mu1, mu2, mu3, and blah, blah, blah on Thursday. And that'll carry us into next Tuesday. And then we can spend that last Thursday just reviewing for, the, uh, for your last exam, which would be fantastic. Because you got a lot of tests now. Notice we've now filled the board. We've not filled the board. Actually, we've overfilled the board because it fit a nova up there too. And this, my friends, this guy is called Goth. For goodness of fit. And we'll talk more about that as we go through the day. We'll, we'll kind of develop it in, in time. But I gave you guys a program years ago, i.e. about four months ago, <laughs> called, called, feels like years ago, called Goth. It was one of the five that I gave you guys in 243, or I gave it to you just now if I didn't have you in 243. I get you to normal, disc fill, disc draw, calc, and the mysterious GOF, goth. And this is what you use it for, is, is what we're going to end up doing today. Not right now. We need to collect data first. 
You'll notice there's no goodness of fit or goth data on that data sheet I gave you guys a few weeks ago. That's because all the data for goth we collect in class. So, fair enough. So that's where we're headed. That's where we're headed today. This is where we were. The moving line is now here. We're going to wrap up the last couple of class periods with dealing with multiple proportions. With dealing with multiple proportions. And hopefully motivate why the hell we need them. Why the hell we need them. First, the first motivation is actually pretty cool. We can test uh, apples in a test that Apple had to do about, like I said, about five or six or seven years ago when the iPod Shuffle came out. Remember the iPod Shuffle? Is the, when it first came out, I think the first three or four years of its existence, the only, the only reason it existed was to put a bunch of songs on, you press the, it had one button, I think, and the button said go. Go. Did it have a fast forward? It might not have a fast forward. Maybe you could shake it. Oh, it did have a fast forward. Okay. But it had one setting, Shuffle. Basically, you put the songs on there, and then it, it flopped around. And Apple began to get complaints. <laughs> what were the complaints they were getting? Do you remember this? Yeah. The complaints were that? The complaints were that uh, the songs kept repeating too often. The same song. Right. So if you've got a bunch of, I don't know, Adele, <laughs> Justin Bieber, <laughs> no Justin Bieber, <laughs> no one does. No, no Justin Bieber, no one's related. Jack Johnson, I don't know, R.E.M. I'm kind of old. You heard my musical selection, those of you that came early. We'll hear it again here momentarily. And you, you know, you're, you're, you're shuffling and you're getting too much beaver, which is kind of an oxymoron. Uh, so, 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 Apple was getting these complaints that said, I'm hearing too much of one artist. I'm not getting enough of my Jack Johnson mix. I'm getting too much of my, my Justin Bieber mix. And Apple has to bite their tongue and say, then take Justin Bieber off your iPod, which is the correct answer, except we can't say that. We can't say that. So, so instead, what Apple actually did was they screwed with the randomizer on their, on their iPods. They actually made it less random. You guys learned very early on, what does randomness do? It clumps. You, you would expect those kind of clumps. I think I told you guys, I got the email from a former 244 student who was talking about, and I, she gave me two, it was... Oh, it was, yeah, Keisha and I want to say, I want to say Jack Johnson, was it? No, no it, it wasn't Jack Johnson. John Mayer. John Mayer, thank you, thank you. John Mayer and Keisha, this big glop of John Mayer and Keisha all in one, all in one spot. And I said, you know, well, think about it. How many times have you played that, that randomizer through? And, and I haven't heard back from her yet, but I'm assuming the answer is a lot, you know, a lot. So you would expect that clump somewhere, and that's what was happening with Apple. People were getting these random clumps that were supposed to be there, but they were upset because they were getting the random clumps that were supposed to be there. So Apple fixed it, if you will. So what I want to test today is I want to see if my iPod, which is not an iPod shuffle, but it has a shuffler engine in it, I want to see if that iPod actually shuffles randomly or if it's still in the dorked with category that the iPod shuffle had. Does that make sense? So I want to see if my iPod is still randomizing like a, as much as a, a computer randomizer can randomize, or I want to see if it's kind of broken, if you will, to see if it's working like the... Ashley, go ahead. You had a question or a oh, comment. No, I was going to say, on my iPod, I noticed, like, when I would start my shuffle yes. on the same song, yes. it would play the same songs following it every time. Ah! Now that, I think I have a solution for that one. Can you give me 10 minutes? Okay. I think I can explain that one. Yeah, Ashley's got... There's a difference between a shuffle and random. There is a difference between those two, and I think what we're talking about, I'm talking, you're talking about the shuffle, and we're going to see that here momentarily, and there's a difference between that and the randomizer, the engine, the randomizer that actually works there. So what I've got, let's take a look at some things. Uh, let's kill this so we can see. I've got a little Excel sheet that keeps track of the songs we hear. All right. So this way you guys can, you guys, oops, you can't do that. You guys can familiarize yourself with what you're about to hear. All right. So I'm going to start up. Getting an idea of the vintage of my music. So what I'm going to do, I have a playlist called Chi Square because I need. You never heard any of them? Playlists. Okay, Chi Square new. I'm going to press the shuffle and just walk away. I'm going to keep track up here as to who we hear. There we go. Show. Watch 
some reaction. And some people react to certain. Shuffle is a great idea, and think about where, they, where you think they got the word shuffle from. Where'd they get the word shuffle from? Go ahead, say, be brave. A deck of cards. Think about shuffling a deck of cards. What do you then usually do next with it? You deal them out. So you give a card to one person. That card cannot be used again because it's out in the game now. Next card goes, next card goes, next card goes. So in other words, this is a very simple deck of cards. It has ten cards in it. It has 10 cards. The random part of it is the shuffling. So it gets shuffled somehow. That's what we're going to test later, is the random engine that actually shuffles the cards. We're going to test it. But once it's randomized, this is what actually I believe was talking about. Once it's randomized, what happens then is you press the shuffle button, and the cards start coming out one at a time. And you'll notice we got every song exactly one time. We never got a song any other time than once. Now, imagine. If it wasn't shuffling, but re-randomizing each time, what would the chance be that we got every song exactly one time? Zero. Essentially zero, wouldn't it? Think about why. Think about why. Let's, let's mute this down for a second. Let's mute this down for a second. We'll do this again on Thursday. <laughs> Okay, so if, if it were just random and not shuffling, and write this down if, you, if, you, if you're interested in a quantification of what Michael just said as far as it's essentially equal to zero, that we would have seen every song at one time. So it, it, basically, this would be like the student that sent me the email, getting the iPod out of the box brand new, loading a buttload of songs onto it, a but remember, there are only 10 songs on this iPod, too. 10 songs in that playlist. All right? So imagine her who has a 1,000 songs on the iPod. And instead of pressing shuffling, she's actually randomizing. And if you're not seeing the difference between shuffle and random right now, don't worry. You'll see it soon enough. You'll see it soon enough. What's the chance you get every single song exactly one time? Well, let's think about it. Probability. You get every song once. In 10 shakes. That's kind of the idea. We're doing this 10 times. Just letting it play 10 times. Okay, so what song comes up first? What song comes up first? What do you think? Queen? Run DMC? Any of them, right? We have a preference for Queen, but any of the songs come up first, correct? So basically, of the 10 songs that are on the iPod, you can have any of the 10 of them. So, in other words, who cares what song happens first? It's going to happen. But, if you want the 10 songs to all be different, how many songs do you have for the next play? Nine. Only nine. But you're still, you're still shaking out of 10. You're still shaking out of 10 songs. 
This is going to start looking like your second project in 243 in a second. How about the next one? Yes, you see the pattern here, friends. Seven, blah, 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 blah. Three, two, one, blah, 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 blah. So what you end up with, if you like shorthand, if you like shorthand, is 10, do you remember the symbol? Bang. Ten, that's a loud lens. 10 bang, right? That's 10 bang. 10 times, 10 factorial. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 all the way down to 1. Over 10 to the 10th. What is the numerical value of that? I call it zero, as did Michael. It's not really zero, is it? I mean, hell, 10 bang is huge. But 10 to the 10th is huger. So, it, well, yes, indeed. So let's do 10 bang. Don't worry about these symbol pushes right here, friends. This is, this is outside of the scope we're talking about immediately right now. It's kind of a throwback to, to before. Divided by 10 to the 10th. Yeah, let's go ahead and call that zero, shall we? Because that's essentially what it is. That's essentially what it is. Essentially zero. Should we mention zero? That's neither even nor odd, only because it's not exactly equal to zero. That's not even a can of worms, Beth. Let's just let it go. That ship is, that ship is, let's just let it go. Just zero. As long as you know zero is what it is, Goose A. The center of the number line, I'm a happy guy. It's the, it's the bottom. It's the bottom of the chi-square in the middle of the bell. I don't really care what you call it, even I call it Francois if you want to, it doesn't matter to me. Call it fish, call it tadpole like my son calls his lizards, whatever. As long as you call it zero, that's all I can. So, clearly, you would, you would have a very, very small chance of playing 10 random songs and getting each one one time. Does that make sense? Good, good, but that's not how shuffle works. So what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking, Ash, is somehow in the computer algorithm for the shuffle, which sounds kind of weird to say anyway, an algorithm for randomization. It seems weird. It's the, kind of the opposite of randomization. I noticed this back with my old, I had an iRiver years and years and years ago. It was just, it's an old company. It's a company now, I think, but they've gone defunct, I think. And I actually wrote them an email because every time I started the shuffle, it started on the same song. And if I fast forwarded through, I got the exact same songs. But every time I started the shuffle, I started on Rancid Time Bomb. I'm, I'm never forgetting. Oh, rancid Time Bomb every single shuffle. And I sent him an email. I'm like, dude, all you've got to do is do a factorial generation, attach it to the songs, and play through the shuffler. I never got an email back, but three months later, they had done that. <laughs> like, thank you. Thank you, my friends, for listening to mathematics. So I think there's something like that maybe at work going, or possibly just a small sample with, with, with erratic behavior. What I want to test now, though, is I want to test not the shuffler, which apparently is working, because we got all songs exactly one time. I want to test the randomized engine. In other words, the engine that actually creates the original list of 10 randomized songs. Does that make sense? See what I'm getting at there, friends? So the way we're going to do that, let's see if we can make this work. Oh, I need this. Turn this off. We'll come back to that. I think I have my iPod set correctly. The way it works, I believe, is it sets a shape to shuffle. Let's see. Yeah, okay, sweet. Why make it so far? Yeah, okay. So what's happening now is every time I shift. <laughs> yes, we like those right. Okay. Every time I shift, we're interrupting the shuffle and we're re-randomizing. So in other words, it's almost like we put all the cards back in the deck. So right now, Billy Bragg is playing. So if we're playing a game of poker, the Billy Bragg card is out. And I said, uh-uh, Billy -uh. really Bragg's back in the deck now. So now there's 10 cards in the deck. Iron Maiden's out. Uh-uh, Iron Maiden's back in the deck. See what I'm doing? I'm screwing the shuffle. So we can do this in Yeah, have you noticed already? We've got some repeats. Hang on. Why? Hang on. Very important, very important. We got the same song a couple times, right? Yeah. Because we're doing with replacement. The cards are going back in the deck. Each time you shake the iPod, the cards are going back to the dealer. Uh-uh, let's wait the deal. Do it again. Do it again. Checking your dealing. And we're checking the dealing of the dealer, which means we're checking the randomizer in the iPod. That's the whole point. We're checking to see if the, end, if the randomizer in the iPod is acting randomly. Now, we won't know that until we crunch the data. So we need data. So I need somebody to come up here and shake this. Who wants to be the iPod shaker? Actually sitting right there, that's very, very good. I will keep track using this counter. I mean, let me zero all out real quick. Well, you can, you can turn, you can turn shake the shuffle off. 
<laughs> you can turn the shaker shuffle off if, if, if I turn it on for this. Well, you can. You can. Or you can just not run. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you guys watch up here, let me center that again. We need to, we need to run this at least 50 times. We'll come back to that after the break. Let's get the data now. Then we'll take our five. And then we'll see if this thing's being ran, if it's behaving randomly enough. All right, Ashley, if you don't mind, go ahead. I need to press play. And let's not count the first card. Go ahead and give her a shake and count this one first. Ready to see. One. Three. Two. Pat Benatar. Three. I'll stop doing that. Good. Yes. 